Today on Yummaker, I'm going to show you how to make your own sandy mop. Whether you're replacing the mop head on one that you already have, or if you're just going to build one from scratch. Either way, it's going to save you money. My name's Casey, and this is Yummaker. Welcome to Yummaker. <laughs> Alright, so here the, here's our setup of different pieces that we're going to need. Uh, I'm going to start with sandpaper. I'm just using 100 grit, one inch thick. This is a 150 foot roll. And by using that roll, which costs about, I want to say like $17, I should be able to make nine sanding mops. So just in the cost alone, I'm saving probably 80% in the long run after making all of them and they can go pretty quick sometimes so but for this I'll end up using about 40 192 inches so and from that this is a 150 foot roll so I should be able to get plenty out of there next we're going to need some way to connect the layers of the sanding mop too so I have an old head or old screw mechanism from sanding mop, which has reverse threads. And there's a good reason for that because what happens when it's spinning, it'll actually cause it to tighten down even more as you're hitting the sandpaper and whatnot. If you can't get that though, I'm just, this is just a quarter by twenty bolt. I've got two washers. Um, I would like. A little bit larger washers but I can't find them so I'm just gonna have to suffice with what I have and two nuts two nuts so that I can jam them together and keep them from moving to keep it coming undone the other option would be to see if I could find a reverse thread bolt with reverse thread nuts and use just one nut that way it will force itself to tighten down a couple other things I have that will help in making this my jigsaw with some really some cheap jigsaw blades and this process will kill the jigsaw blades um, that's why I want cheap ones ones that will cut through the fabric but as they're cutting through it's gonna also hit the abrasive and that's why it kills the jigsaw blades I have a couple scrap pieces of wood here one of them is going to be for making a jig to cut strips and then the other piece that I'm going to use for basically making a sandwich of about 12, 6 to 12 pieces at a time to sandwich them together. And then I'll use the jigsaw to cut those, and you'll see that when I get there. Um, so I'm going to go into narration mode now, and we'll see you at the end. Okay, so first thing we're going to make is a little cutoff tool. That way, as I tear the strips, they're pretty much the same size every time. Use an old uh, metal hacksaw blade so that way it'll at least last a little while on there. Plus, I'm not going to need the entire thing. I just need a strip that's going to cover that board. And it's about two, two inches wide or so, three quarter inch thick piece of like pine or something like that. I just pulled it out of my scrap bin. Uh, to secure it in place I just took two screws with two washers. Yeah, actually I didn't even use washers on that. I was going to and then I decided not to. So I just drilled the hole there and the second hole and then the screws down and let the blade so it can sit about an eighth of an inch off. And then just using my Dremel with the cutoff wheel, I just cut off, scored the blade, bent it, and it snapped. And then on the back side, I just cut down the, the screws so they wouldn't stick out and be poking me or anything. Now we're cutting off pieces, uh, cutting six at a time. And the measurement from the blade where it's cutting to the end of the board is four inches. I'm going to cut a total of four sets here. I'm going to do them uh, six, 
and then 6, and then 6, and then 6, for 4 sets of 12. Just about done. So there we go. Let's get those out of the way. So this next piece I'm going to start working on is a kind of like a template um, for cutting the sandpaper. But I'm taking off one of my good blades and putting on a cheaper straight cut blade there. I cut the board a little bit proud of. What the sandpaper is probably mm, three eighths of an inch on either side. And as you can see there, the sandpaper fits in the middle from end to end, roughly. And then now I'm finding the center because that's where I'm going to drill a hole that will be like the kind of target for drilling a hole in the sandpaper. And then I marked out three quarters of an inch on either side of the hole, drew a line, and then ended up making uh, so three sixteenths roughly marks, and then drew those to the end. So I ended up with a total of five strips coming off on either side. So I don't want them too close, but I don't want them. Too I don't want them too small, but I don't want them too large. And there, I was just using some electrical tape to tape it together. And now I'm just pre-cutting those kind of guidelines. And I went ahead and cut the outsides of where the sandpaper strips are going to actually sit in between. Just that way when I'm lining them up on the piece, it's a lot easier to, to see where they should go instead of trying to guesstimate and make sure it's in the middle. So now I just take the sandpaper, sandwich it in between. I'm doing six at a time for most of these. Use the tape to kind of hold everything together and just start cutting away. So I'm gonna cut those and then I drill using that hole that I made earlier and drill in the middle. There we go. And then just start sticking them on the bolt. Um, it is a bolt and a washer. And then I take the first layer, I have them so they would be on the outside. And then I'm just going to rinse and repeat on the next set here. Just getting that all taped up. Cut that out, and as I'm cutting here, the blade is already starting to dull. It's still cutting, but it's not cutting as well as it did at the first. And I tried cutting with the fabric side up, hoping that it would push through and not hit the the sanding material and cause as much damage, but. As you will see here in just a second, it's actually coming up right now. Look at that, it's just toast. The blade is no good. Um, so I'm going to replace that and drill the hole out. You can kind of see up there in the upper right hand side where the mop, I've got the other the second set on there now, so now I just need to rinse and repeat that you know, for three more sets. While we're doing that, it would be a great time to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. That way, anytime a new video comes out, you'll know right away. I mean, you guys love this content, don't you? Let me know in the, the comments what you're thinking of the video so far. and. If you have any ideas or suggestions, like on this one, if you know a better way to cut that sandpaper without it ruining blades, let me know. I mean, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is like a water jet, but I don't have the time or the money to buy or build 
any kind of significant water jet right now. Would I love to have one? Oh yeah. So working on set number three here. We're almost done. Um, this entire process, actually, it took about an hour and a half, and that's with recording and whatnot. Uh, and moving things around, all said and done, probably take you half an hour to make one of these. And I had to run inside for a good 10, 15 minutes as well, so. This time I actually ended up cutting out 12 pieces to see if it would make a difference and I have to replace the blade yet again. Um, and all in all, I used about $2, maybe 2 50 or so in blades. The like I said at the beginning, I, it was actually $20 that I paid for the sandpaper, and I should be able to get 9 out of that. The nut and bolts were looking like, I, I figure if you buy in a box of them, 50 cents for the two washers, the two bolts, and the one, or the one bolt and the two nuts. Here I'm just testing it out. I used the, just a scrap piece of wood to start off with really quick to break it in. All right, so there we go. We just made $15 sanding mop for about $3, maybe $4. Um, as you can see there, those blades, they go quick. Um, so I was getting 12 to 18 strips that I would cut through before I'd have to change the blades. So that's why I cannot Starts enough to get the cheapest blades that you can so they don't cost you too much. You don't want the cost of making this to be more than the cost of just buying it. So, but my opinion, they work wonderfully. The corner on that worked out great. Um, saved a lot of time that I don't have to do with the routing and whatnot. So, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon. That way you get notified as soon as new content comes out. And leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the show. All right, have a good day.